Okay, just a really quick update on how I'm getting on with the EverDrive GBA from Crix. I've been using it a lot more recently and uh, all the games seem to run really well. The compatibility rate's great. You've seen various reviews out there, um, both videos and written up ones, and you'll see the detail of the quality of the EverDrive. Um, it really is extremely popular with everyone who's trying it out. I think the only thing that's really said about it that could be improved is the size. I think people might be tempted even if it was, say, I don't know, at the loss of the real-time clock to get it smaller so it is flush with uh, the Game Boy Advance. But besides that, it's a fantastic device. And the other thing that is being discussed quite a bit at the moment is the treatment of the micro SD cards because you're quite, you'll find that quite a lot seem to be having issues working in the Game Boy Advance um, uh, EverDrive cartridge by Crix. It's it seems to be. I'm not sure if it's 100% um, the case, but broadly, don't know if that'll uh, focus happily. But broadly, that that's the one I'm using at the moment. Anyway, it's a class four eight gig, and that's working flawlessly. And it seems that maybe it's a case that the um, class ten devices are having issues, and it certainly seems to be the case with the ones that I've tried. But um, others have reported as well, if, if they're not using class 10, then um, it's working pretty well. You can get 32 gig cards that are class 4, class 6, uh, well, definitely class 6, I think class 4 as well. So there's quite a lot of options out there. Um, but in addition, it might not be that hard and fast rule. It might be if you format it in a certain way, um, that class 10s work well as well. But uh, either way, there's, um, there's a way around it, and no doubt... Maybe there'll be an update in the future so that um, all of the cards work flawlessly with the EverDrive. Because I have tried the cards that don't work in here reliably in other devices like um, like a Raspberry Pi or a uh, just a camera generally, and they're fine. So I don't think it's the card themselves. I think there is some sort of compatibility issue there. But anyway, I just wanted to share a couple of other games that I've been running just so you can see how they run on the EverDrive. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, do put it in the comments and I'll try to help out where I can. Uh, I haven't used EverDrives a lot before. I've got the Mega EverDrive one, which I use, and the Game Boy one, but that's it. I just found that this one in particular is great for the GBA because it can play other games like the Game Boy ROMs and Game Boy Color ROMs. Not directly, but with through other emulators that I can show. So we put that in there. Again, that's the part that sticks out, but I think everyone knows that now. Okay, so we we'll power that one up. Um, this is the Game Boy um, SP, obviously, but it's a 101 model, so the brightness can be tweaked with this button at the top, and the default level is quite high as well, so it does give a good uh, a good output there. Okay, so if I go down into the test directory, I've got. By the way, you might see here we've got the directory names; they're not in alphabetical order. And I think that's related to the file system that the, the SD cards need, which is FAT32. And by default, I don't think that supports um, an output in alphabetical order. So either the software would need to do something to, I think, reorder that, or you can use a tool like, um, I think it's called FAT Sorter, or FAT32 Sorter, and you can apply it to the card and then it will rejig these in alphabetical order. Or I think you can get around it by just writing the folder names um, in order that you want them to appear because that's basically how they're output as far as I understand that anyway I'd have to try that out but in case you really do want to get specific about the layout there is a way around to make sure that does appear alphabetically okay so test folder as I showed in the previous video Boktai, uh, Max Payne, Tony Hawk and Pocket NES menu now the three emulators here are you've got Pocket NES which is Windows application you roll in um, Nintendo sort of NES ROMs and it outputs a single GBA file and then you can play those as an emulator, almost in an emulator. Um, it's a really good way to get an extra library of um, games on here. So it's really easy on the Game Boy Advance to be able to play all of the Nintendo games, all of the Game Boy standard games, all of the Game Boy Color games. And there's even some other emulators I haven't tried yet. There's a Super Nintendo emulator but uh, I read that's a bit flaky, so I haven't tried that out. And there are some other systems as well, not necessarily quite mainstream, but some other um, systems are covered. Okay, so down here we've got Game Boy Color. Now, that GBA ROM was built using Goomba Color, and that rolls in Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs, and outputs a GBA ROM. 
and it plays it as though you're playing it on a Game Boy Color. So if you put an original Game Boy ROM in there, it comes out as though you're playing it on the Game Boy Color, i.e. it's colorized to the extent it can. Uh, separately, this one, GB, uh, GBA. Uh, I don't know what the big blank space is. Maybe it's got a minimum of eight characters and it doesn't connect the two. Anyway, it works fine. The file name's GB.GBA. And in there, I use Goomba, not Goomba Color. And that it emulates more as though you've got an original Game Boy. So the slightly sort of green hue to it. And I'll show you that. Um, I've got Yoshi's Universal Gravitational, which I think is the one that does the tilt, which obviously doesn't work with the cartridge because the cartridge doesn't support that. So it's a game that isn't going to work that well there. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie, uh, sample video. I think somebody's asked on one of the forums about whether the Game Boy EverDrive, Game Boy Advance EverDrive, supports the Meteo application, which converts AVI files or MPEG-1 files to a Game Boy Advance format. And that seems to work okay as well. And then I've just got Mother 3, mainly because it's such a large ROM. It's 32 meg. And um, you get an example, or a, you can see how long it takes to load. And as you saw, this is a class 4 uh, micro SD. Okay, so we'll just quickly run Pocket NES again, because I think it's really interesting. I just want to show that again. So run that, select and start. And then these are the four games that I've run into that. And you can see in the background there, it's, it's starting up. So if I start Castlevania, straight into Castlevania. And as I said before, if you want it even brighter than the default, actually, let's get into the game first. Okay, so uh, there's the game, obviously. And you can tap the button to get an even lighter background. I think I'm not supposed to kill it. Anyway, um, yeah, that's the point. So it can run NES games quite happily. Let's uh, quit that, open up that again. Beats up pretty quick, as you can see. Uh, back into the test folder. And what we've got next, Game Boy Color. So these are, what I've put here, original Game Boy games, but use Game Boy Color to wrap them up so it plays it like it's on a Game Boy Color. And similar kind of layout. I've got my three games there that I've wrapped up. And it's got color, even though it's the original ROM. Uh, Super Mario Land and Tetris. So let's give Super Mario Land a go. I'm not sure about the colours it's kind of choos chosen here. I think, to be honest, if I'm playing an original game, I'm okay with it in that weird green that they used to come in. And you get the idea. It plays really well. I haven't found a problem with it. It emulates um, pretty reliably. I think there are some games that it does have compatibility issues with but they're few and far between as far as I can see. So obviously that's a way to play uh, Game Boy Color Catalog. And if we go down here again, next one is Game Boy. So this was with Goomba. Um, it's the same games, but this time obviously just with the standard emulator. And there you've got that green background all the way. So if I give Tetris a go maybe. Sometimes pressing that is just too bright. I think um, it's fine standard. There we go. Okay, Tetris. I'm gonna keep going until I get one line. There we go. Um, and as I said, I think I prefer playing these in the colors they were sort of originally designed in. But no problems at all with that. And thanks to all the forum members who pointed these type of applications out. Before I got the Game Boy Advance EverDrive, I didn't know about those at all. I think they're a great addition to play extra games. Okay, so that was the Goomba. Um, 
um, pocket pocket nares goomba color goomba and let's give banjo kazooie a go just make sure it plays okay i think this has got quite a long intro and i might not be able to skip it so um, you might want to just click ahead on this And I'm in the game. Okay. Um, I haven't played this before, but um, it's certainly playing fine on this. The, the ROM's no problem at all. Um, okay, so I've got jump. Uh, I'm making it look a lot harder than it is. Oh, there we go. No, no more talking. Okay. But yeah, this this runs fine. So um, I think really the compatibility that's stated at about 99% of the commercial games is probably pretty. Yeah. Uh, Probably pretty accurate. I don't see, um, I haven't found any games that have had problems so far. Anyway, let's put that Panji Kazooie one and let's check out the next one. Okay, 
uh, test folder. Okay, so this is a AVI video that I use Meteor to convert, and it seems to work okay. I mean, it's quite a small resolution I chose. Um, it's just a random video I downloaded to give an example of the, it was the right format because it was really picky about it being the right codec in there for it to convert. But um, I think as long as you don't put a video that's too high resolution in there, um, it should play it fine. It's certainly not got an issue playing this back. Um, so I think if you've already got one that works, I don't see why the, the EverDrive shouldn't be able to play it back either. And then it just goes on a loop. Any of the buttons just restart it. I'd say that's per perfectly watchable. No issues with that. I haven't tried watching videos on it before, but uh, it works if you need it to. Okay, and the last one was just uh, quite a large ROM. I just wanted to show the loading times. And as you saw, I'm using a class four, so maybe it'd be quicker with a class six or class 10, if you can get that to work reliably. Um, 32 meg, mother three, start that one. So it's obviously a bit longer than usual, but that's it, that wasn't really that bad for 32 meg. Translated option, so I can read it. I haven't, I've rarely played this to be honest. I should probably give it a better go, but uh, for test purposes, it's quite useful. Right, I'm not sure how quickly I can get in the game, but if I set all the names to be don't care. That loads fine, no problems at all. So I don't think the file size of a ROM would be um, an issue with this either. They all seem to load quite happily and, uh, and save quite happily as well. So again, um, it's a great device. I think um, the future revisions can only improve it. If you've got any questions, please do uh, pop it in the comments and I'll try to help out where I can. And um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.